Hello, this is Joe Gersh from Secure64. In this demonstration, I would like to show you how easy it is to deploy DNSSEC into your existing DNS environment. The Secure64 DNS signer can act as a standalone device. It can be your signing engine and your DNS server, but more typically, you're going to slide it into an existing infrastructure. You may have a provisioning system already, an IPAM system or a hidden master with the zone data, zone data that is sent out to the various slave servers, be it Bind or Microsoft or NSD. Where does the Secure64 DNS signer fit in a situation like this? Typically, you would slide it in as a signer in the middle. The provisioning system would still send unsigned zone data now to the signer instead of to the slaves. The signer would do all the work of creating DNS keys, RR SIGs, and NSEC records and so forth, roll the keys when necessary, and it would then send the signed zone data out to the slave servers and thereby to the rest of the world. Once it's deployed, you also have to configure it, and that's really relatively simple. There's a configuration file to which you add one line, DNSSEC automate on. There are also, of course, other types of things you could do, such as setting key lengths or rollover periods, but let's see how this works on a real system and go to a live screen. Okay, we're on a live system now, so let's log in as a username tester and enter the password. The next thing I need to do is enable myself as a DNS administrator because it is a role-based system. Once I'm in, I can do commands you're used to like ls. However, it's not Linux at the base, but a very secure operating system in order to keep the signing keys safe. And let's look at a typical zone file. In the configuration from the provisioning system, I've already SCP'd over a zone file, so let's look at secure 64 dot com dot zone. This is a very typical but tiny zone file for the demonstration. It's got an SOA record for the secure64.com zone. It's got an NS records and typical A records. For example, here's the uh, www record with an A record for 64.92.221.180. Now, let's actually show what needs to happen to the configuration file. If I edit the nsd.conf file, you'll notice that there's a server clause and zone clauses, and it says one of my zones is that secure64.com zone. But here is the line that makes all of the signing happen. DNSSEC automate yes. That's the only zone or the only line that I've added to the configuration file to turn on DNSSEC signing. As I get out of that, I can now say, let's um, do a zone compile, which will start up all of the uh, processing to make all of the data wire ready so that it can be served very quickly. And now let's take a look at what happened because it not only did a zone compile, but it signed the data as well. So let's take a look at secure64.com.zone, but this time append.sign to it. And here indeed are a number of records. For example, here are DNS key records. As we go down further, we'll see that there are NSEC records, RRSIG records, a whole lot of extra data is contained in the file now. And how did all this happen? Nothing you had to do. The signer is totally automated, did it correctly, did it safely, and this thing can scale up to not just a few lines, it could be hundreds of thousands of zones and millions and millions of records. Let's take a look now at the benefits of the Secure64 signer. There are a number of benefits for you to use a Secure64 DNSSEC signing appliance. In particular, for the management team, it's a quick way to make DNSSEC happen at a reduced cost versus manual techniques. For staff, it's simple and timely. It's a lot less to learn, and you can make it happen. It also does it correctly and securely. But the bottom line is for the Internet users themselves. Let's make the Internet a lot safer place to access by deploying DNSSEC on a wide basis. Thanks a lot. For more information, visit us at www.secure64.com. Thanks.